What is going on guys? Thank you all so much for tuning in. Today, what I want to get into is how to house hack and essentially live for free because my wife and I recently purchased a property and it has been really, really fantastic because we have had a significant part of our mortgage being covered by our rented out unit and our tenant paying us rent every month. So I really want to show you guys how you can do the same thing and really benefit yourselves. And before we do that, if you guys could take just a quick second to hit that like button, I really do appreciate it. That way we can go back to growing this channel and back to weekly uploads. And I know I have been just way, way terrible with this channel lately. I used to upload at least weekly and I haven't uploaded a video in almost six months, but we are back at it. So let's go ahead and talk about this house hack. Now, a few details on the house that my wife and I purchased is it actually isn't a traditional duplex, if you will. It is actually a single family home as well as a garage that got converted into a unit. Now, the main home is three bedrooms, one bath. Uh, we're considering eventually adding an additional bathroom thinking that we might be able to get more rent down the road, but that is quite a ways down the road, so not too worried about that right now. Uh, so that's the house we're living in. That is our area where I have my office, which is where I'm recording this right now. That's where I keep all my vending inventory. Uh, it does have a full basement, which is nice because that's where I keep all my machines as well as like holidays uh, stuff and all that good stuff for storage. Now. The side house, like I mentioned, is actually a garage that got converted into a unit. Now, that is actually a separate address, so it is not actually attached to the house, which is nice because it does give us a, a little bit more privacy. Now, that house is a one bedroom, a one bath, and is about 475 square feet, so it is a pretty small unit, but it is nice getting that rent check either way. Now, something I do want to mention really quick is being how it was a side garage that got converted into a unit. I know a lot of you may be thinking, well, is it actually a legal unit? Is it all up to code with the state and everything? And yes, it actually is done correctly. It is not just kind of a homemade thing and decided to rent out. This is actually up to code and the city knows about it and has a separate address. It is a uh, separate sewer line, a separate electrical, everything is separate. So everything is legitimate with the side unit. So another quick thing that was pretty nice about this property over some of the other ones we looked at is this one actually already had a tenant in place and was a long-term tenant. He's been, he actually used to live in the main house for about five years. He moved out for, I believe, a couple of months and then eventually moved into the side unit that he is currently in and he has been there for about four years now and has expressed to us he has uh, no interest in moving anytime soon. He definitely likes staying there, which why wouldn't he? The rent is pretty cheap there compared to uh, the rest of the area, even though it is a pretty small space. Uh, he's been a great tenant so far. He has paid rent on time or even uh, a time or two. I think he paid a day or two early, which was a really nice. Uh, I've been in the property or his apartment, you, I guess I could say, quite a few times. And every single time it has been very clean. He's been upkeeping it very nicely. So it seems like I really lucked out in inheriting such a great tenant. That is definitely not something that always happens. That was actually one of the reasons one of our other properties we were looking uh, at fell through is one of the uh, units was rented out and he was supposed to be leaving, but he ended up staying and turned into a squatter, going back and forth for the seller for quite a while. Uh, he ha had so much trouble getting him out, we ended up having to uh, walk away from the deal because he could not manage to uh, get this tenant out of the property. Now, there definitely is somewhat of a downside to all of this as well. It's not all a rainbow and sunshines, unfortunately. However, it has been uh, pretty great overall. Uh, some of the negative things are kind of maintaining the house and having to do repair calls. There was a few things that I had to take care of for my tenant's property uh, that 
I did myself, but so I saved a lot of money. Uh, however, they would have been rather pricey if I had uh, a professional come out and do them. I had two small problems. The first one was just that his heater wasn't properly working, so that did scare me quite a bit at first. Um, I ended up calling an electrician, and he came out and fixed the problem for only 60 bucks. so that was really nice that it didn't cost too much. And the second one was he had a clogged pipe, and I couldn't get it to drain. I tried snaking it. I couldn't get it to work, and eventually I decided to just replace the pipe uh, I ended up doing it myself. It cost less than $50 in parts and really wasn't all that hard. It did take me about six hours to do and about $45 in parts. However, that is nothing compared to uh, what it would have cost me if I would have had a plumber do it myself or had a plumber do it instead of doing it myself. Now, this property is quite a fixer-upper, so there has been a lot of construction work going on. Uh, I did put down all new flooring all throughout the downstairs level except for the bathroom. We ended up deciding to uh, keep the tile for now. Uh, we might glaze over it or eventually do something else with it. We haven't 100% decided on that yet, but for right now, we like it enough. Now, the flooring that I went with for the old hole downstairs, I went with vinyl plank. I installed it myself. It cost $3.19 a square foot, I believe, somewhere around that price. So that was about $25, $300, somewhere around that, and definitely needed to be done. Now the upstairs, we ended up going with carpet, uh, and that was about $1,600 to get the carpet in place. Now. A lot of the other repairs have been kind of uh, more time intensive, but not so much monetarily uh, intensive. Uh, that's just because we're doing all of the work ourselves. We did have old cabinets in the kitchen that we ended up rehabbing and they actually look pretty good right now. Uh, we repainted the walls in the kitchen. Now something big did end up coming up and I'll probably get to that in another video. Uh, so our construction work has slowed down quite a bit. Uh, there's still a lot that needs to be done. Now I know what a lot of you are probably thinking right about now and that is, well how much did all of this cost you? So I'm going to go ahead and answer that for you. So we purchased the property for $192,000. We did receive some seller help towards closing costs. Uh, for a total out-of-pocket uh, of only about $12,000. I know $12,000 is a fairly considerable amount of money. However, for owning two properties, that is really not that much to come up with uh, given the fact that they do, one of the units does produce rental income for you. Now, we ended up going with FHA financing. So we put a very small down payment uh, on the property, obviously, if our total out of pocket was only twelve thousand uh, dollars, and then the rest of it, which the down payment I believe made up about eight or nine thousand dollars of the twelve thousand uh, dollars, the rest of it was closing costs and settlement, all of that good stuff. Now, what this ends up costing us every single month, uh, now this is keep in mind includes uh, principal and interest private mortgage insurance because we did put such a small down payment down, uh, property taxes as well as homeowners insurance. All of those things lumped together in our escrow account is $1,253 a month uh, and that is our monthly mortgage slash uh, rest of that stuff payment uh, because it is escrow to make it easier on us. If you're not familiar with what escrow is, by the way, it's basically uh, in your mortgage, they will set up an account that you they take a portion of your payment and put it and hold it in the account to go towards your annual uh, property taxes and annual insurance plan, whichever one you go with. Just uh, makes it a lot easier uh, and less uh, additional payments to make. It just makes it one big, easier payment. Now that you know how much this property is costing us out of pocket, how much are we bringing in from this? Well, currently our tenant that uh, has been there for quite a while and has been paying rent has been paying us about $700 
a month, or I guess I really shouldn't say about 700, he has been paying $700 every single month. Uh, now eventually that's gonna just go up over time as the market for rent goes up while we are still locked into that same payment. Now eventually when we move out of this main house, we will rent this out and that will rent for at least 1300 I'm thinking. Uh, as far as I know, it previously was rented for about $1,300 a month. So after these repairs are done and a few years go by when we buy our next property, I see no reason that we can't get at least $1,300 a month, uh, which will cover our entire mortgage payment uh, as well as all the property taxes and all that good stuff. So that would leave us with the $700 a month uh, to go towards uh, repairs, capital expenditures, vacancies, and then the remainder will be uh, our total profit. Uh, now, one other quick thing about real estate is there is a lot of tax benefits to owning real estate. I know the uh, interest paid on a mortgage is indeed tax deductible. Uh, I know there's a lot of other tax benefits. I don't know them off the top of my head right now. And lastly, on top of all of that cash flow we get, we do get to have our net worth constantly go up every single month just for owning the property uh, via that sweet, sweet equity that we gain in the house every single month that we pay down our mortgage payment and that will go directly to increasing our net worth every single month. So that is another huge reason why you should buy real estate. Anyway guys, so that is the deal that my wife and I made. We ended up buying this house hack. I hope you guys enjoyed me uh, kind of sharing what we did and hopefully you guys can find some inspiration or you know maybe I can help you realize that this is not something that is really that hard to do. So you guys can go out and do this yourselves. Anyway guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you guys hit that like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe for more, and I will catch you all in the next one.